In 2012, makers of V-Energy drink Frucor decided they wanted to expand their business into the market of sports drinks and created Maximus, a sports drink aimed at 16 to 44-year-old males who lived active lifestyles but were not workout obsessives. This audience needed the physical and emotional fuel to be the active, real man they aspired to be, without all the sciencey sports bullshit. As Frucor put it, this audience needed the non-sports sport drink. As if starting from nothing with a new product wasn't already a challenge, Frucor set themselves some pretty ambitious targets as their campaign objectives. The campaign aimed to increase Maximus sales to 7.5 million drinks over two years, achieving a 10% share of the sports drink category. This meant getting roughly 200,000 people to regularly drink Maximus, about 26 times a year or once every two weeks. Frucor also wanted to create 26% brand awareness and get 1 million people to try the drink by the end of the two-year period. In order to achieve this, Frucor wanted to reach 80% of the population 5 to 7 times a year. Finally, Frucor wanted 50% of all of Maximus's sales to be incremental to the category, or additional growth, so as to not appear as though they were diminishing the value of the sports drink category or obstructing Powerade and Gatorade's contribution in this area. On top of this, integrating a new product into the market was going to be difficult due to Fierce competition. Powerade and Gatorade had a 98% share of the category and there was no way they would give 10% of this over to a new competitor. Retailers were also happy with the status quo. Due to high margins in the sports drink category and stable sales growth, retailers were happy with the duopoly. Feedback was that they didn't want a third player who diminished the value of the category in any way. Frugal also had a poor track record to its name. They had wanted to enter the sports drink category for quite some time and had launched products in it before, but failed miserably for the most part and cost the company millions of dollars. The approach had been to focus on product functionality with faster hydrating Myzone Rapid in 2007 and then attempt to leverage the equity of the V brand into sports with V Isokinetic in 2010. The final barrier was that apparently consumers were also satisfied. 75% of consumers reported that they were currently satisfied with the category offer and were not after an alternative provider. Frucor partnered with OMD Media Agency for strategy and media planning. The Salt Mine Design Group was hired for bottle design, opting for a bulky one litre bottle with a hyperbolic go big message that reflected the audience's straight up full tilt lives because of its one litre size and no bullshit attitude, and fit the hydration requirements of the target audience, but more on that later. Advertising agency Give Art Science was approached for creative ideas on how to make retailers want to stock Maximus and not just on the bottom shelf, and make consumers aware of and want to buy Maximus. Before any strategies could be put in place, research was carried out to find out more about the target consumer. They were depicted as young Aussie blokes with busy and active lives filled with mateship, activity, hard work and playful one-upmanship. They lived life to the max with very little bullshit in them and the familiar question, was it big enough? The next step was to understand consumption behaviour. Powerade and Gatorade seemed to think that sports drinks were needed during and after intense physical activity, and so they promoted their drinks' scientific isotonic properties to improve peak performance with endorsements from athletes, but consumption data showed that this was not the case. In fact, 63% of sports drinking occasions were outside of a sporting environment, meaning nearly two-thirds of sports drinks' consumption had nothing to do with sport at all. Real usage data indicated that the real sports drink consumption occasions were when people were hungover during manual labour and while relaxing at home. Then OMD factored in a staple of the sports drink category, hydration. The target audience knew they had to stay hydrated, understanding that the 2 litres a day recommendation was probably not enough for them given the turned up to 11 pace at which they lived their lives. OMD knew that the target audience would never drink 3 litres of water since it was too boring and so they were actively seeking alternative ways to keep hydrated. It seemed that what consumers were actually looking for was fuel for everyday life and not just an elite sports drink for use after a workout, and so Maximus was not going to go the scientific bullshit route that was almost a staple of the sports drink category so far. However, the sports drink category did have some strong equity aspects, especially around isotonic and its hydration credentials, and masculinity, so in order for consumers to consider Maximus, Frucor was mindful not to reject these things that would attract people. Further research showed why people who wanted hydration were not buying into it previously. Even 600 milliliters was not enough liquid to make them feel properly hydrated, a functional barrier that was remedied with that big one liter bottle design that I mentioned before. Also, they felt like they were paying for elite sports science that was not needed, an emotional barrier that was remedied with Maximus's less science bullshit attitude. 
Size and price needed to be a considerable factor in the new product, but Maximus couldn't just be a cheaper version of Powerade or Gatorade if it was to grow and add value to the category. This drink had to have the same, if not better, functional benefits of its isotonic competitors while existing at the same price point and not diminishing category value. Frucor's thorough research gave them valuable insights such as these, and this definitely helped them create a product that actually spoke to the real consumption moments of real people, and therefore met actual needs of its consumers. Now that the research was done, the first step was to nail distribution by showing retailers that Maximus had plans behind it so they would take it seriously. Starting as a white-collar sampling brief, Frucor produced Maximus Academy, a six-part TV show that aired on Fox Sports to engage with customers. This idea was a success as it generated awareness, interest, desire and action from retailers, which then resulted in increased numeric distribution of all convenience and grocery stores in Australia, almost doubling the 51% distribution rate in June to 94% in December that same year. This also generated ADA in the target audience, as this creative execution stood out with its smart use of media location, gaining popularity due to the endless supply of size jokes and metaphors that massively appealed to the target audience's sense of humour. After Maximus became physically available, the next step was to communicate mental availability to the target audience. OMD recommended outdoor media as the primary channel to drive awareness of Maximus as it had the greatest index of any other media channel amongst the target audience. With Go Big as the main idea, this was demonstrated with special builds. Maximus was literally too big for a billboard, and accompanied with cheeky playful headlines such as Size Matters and We Thought This Billboard Was Bigger, which signaled to blokes that Maximus was cutting the category scientific bullshit and were speaking directly to what every guy had ever wanted, more size. This reached 89% of the target audience and achieved a prompted awareness of 35% versus the original goal of 26. Then the proposition was brought to life through product innovation, the world's first beer-flavoured sports drink, which came into existence when a focus group of consumers were asked what they wanted, and they responded in unashamedly Aussie fashion, asking for free beer and something for the resulting hangover. Frugal then partnered with radio station Nova's comedy breakfast show Fitzy and Whipper for a giveaway of the beer-flavoured version of Maximus, of which only 10,000 bottles were made. After this, the Social Athlete Limited Edition flavour of the drink was released, with added milk thistle for liver function with hangover-repairing electrolytes. Maximus Social Athlete was launched with six videos on social media, inviting consumers to find their social athlete persona with a quiz, inviting audience engagement and was sold between November and January during the silly season. This was clever, as this time of year was bound to be full of drunken nights where consumers would require hangover remedies the morning after. Infiltration of consumers on a night out was the key media distribution strategy, with the need recognition opportunity communicated through Spotify, radio, pub toilets and taxis during pre-drinks and while out. Choosing nights out as the prime time to talk to the target audience was clever as it spoke to them at the times when they felt thirsty and could enjoy the cheeky jokes while also thinking about the hangover that lay ahead of them and preparing accordingly by buying some Maximus in advance. This being said, it might have been more effective to talk to the target audience during hangover moments rather than drunk moments, considering the impairments to the target audience's mental capacity and ability to think ahead while drunk. Lastly, the communication solution needed to find a way to deliver the functional message of size and engage the target audience on social media. Consumers were encouraged to develop a tactile connection with the product and feel the exercise for themselves by being asked to prove that they could go big. A competition was held across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and the I Can Handle It website where consumers posted pictures of them holding a Maximus bottle with the hashtag I Can Handle It and the biggest grip would win a trip to Las Vegas. As well as incentivizing purchase, drinkers went out of their way to engage with the product and had fun while doing it. Social media was updated regularly to engage with loyalists with funny relatable posts, otherwise known as memes, and to drive campaign support amongst consumers. Its primary role has remained a platform to learn about the audience, with an average engagement rate of 10.55% versus the industry standard of 0.98%. The campaign helped grow Maximus to a huge 24% category share, and cement in retailers' minds that Maximus was a serious contender while also persuading customers to actually buy Maximus. This was especially important not only to boost sales, but also to make buying Maximus a habit, which was important as the drink was a fast-moving consumer good and a low importance and involvement purchase, both of which are usually purchased according to promotions or habit. The campaign was also proven successful in creating long-lasting brand awareness due to its fun, memorable nature, making the most of the chosen social platforms to encourage user-generated content and boost likability. 
However, the I can handle it competition and certain posts on social media caused controversy and was called out as sexist and inappropriate as only men could answer and win the competition and the overall imagery of the billboards implied less than holistic use of male genitalia. Also, the lack of activity on Snapchat, which was developed in 2013, meant that Maximus was missing out on a huge part of the younger half of the target audience's social media engagement, though this was perhaps not particularly detrimental to the brand, as neither Powerade nor Gatorade were on Snapchat at the time of the campaign either. Overall, the campaign was a huge success, garnering a positive return on investment, with the creative and media executions working together well to offer emotional benefits through entertainment and engaging customers. Combined with their extremely well-researched and targeted approach, these strategies fit the brand awareness goals of a new product as they use social media, encourage trials of the product, and utilize the best channel for the target audience, following the steps in developing effective communication, identifying the target audience, determining the message, choosing the right media, choosing the right message source, and collecting feedback. Over two years, through a combination of good media planning and creative executions, Frucor exceeded their business goals in terms of sales and category share, also growing the category itself as each stock keeping unit in the range brought more value than the competition. The Aztec Convenience Math Sports Liquid Scan indicates how the total category grew to $7.2 million, with Maximus accounting for 68% of the growth. The number of drinkers exceeded goals with 754,000 in 2014, almost four times the amount of their original goal of 200,000. They also passed the target penetration, awareness, trials, and reach and frequency goals. Frucor's efforts in gathering consumer insights for their product and employing appropriate media strategies fit the marketing objectives of a product launch that wanted to make progress in sales and awareness. While the campaign did help Frucor achieve these results, they could have afforded to spend the second year, or perhaps even dedicated a third year to generate more long-term habit-based sales, as by that point in the campaign, awareness would not be such an important focus point. Customer engagement proved to be a highly effective way of increasing figures, so providing more opportunities for active consumer engagement through entertainment, promotions, and staying on top of social media trends would be a more useful way of strengthening its presence in the market and in consumers' minds than traditional advertising.